Welcome back for another episode of Cannon Fodder. Well, the community update, but you know what I mean. There's a lot going on today, so let's dive in. Before we get to the actual Cannon Fodder section, we open with two trailers. The first is the new Atriox trailer revealed last night during the Game Awards. I recently uploaded a breakdown of the trailer, which can be viewed by clicking the annotation on screen or checking the description box. We also get a trailer for the Halo Wars Definitive Edition. This version has been optimized for Xbox One and Windows 10, can run it up to 4K resolution on PC, features improved audio, visual effects, and graphics, includes all DLC, along with brand new achievements and bonus content. Sadly, the trailer is nothing but cinematics cut together like a generic action movie with no heart, no spirit, and unfortunately, no gameplay. On the bright side, if you pre-order Halo Wars 2 Ultimate Edition, you can get access to the Halo Wars Definitive Edition starting on December 20th. Now, not everyone will get access that day, but that's when the activation tokens will start rolling out, so... Yeah. Moving forward, we get into the actual Cannon Fodder section, which opens with a look at the Elite Commandos from Hunting Party in Tales from Slipspace, which is finally out. Still no idea what the fuck happened with that, but it's 100% available now, so pick it up if you're interested, and if you feel like it, check out my review. Anyway, we focus on the Elite Commandos, who were part of the Silent Shadow. The Silent Shadow was a spec ops group comprised of several different individual squads. The one in Hunting Party is led by Ressa Azavale, a First Blade officer. Post-war, Ressa's team was hunting down Gerald Hanai forces, which eventually leads them to Atriox. However, this was not the first time we met the Silent Shadow. Fans may recall Sanghili clad in identical armor and headhunters from Halo Evolutions. Both headhunters and Hunting Party were written by John Goff. According to Grimm, the Silent Shadow is recognizable due to their unique combat harnesses and the incorporation of often experimental technology and weaponry. Whether Ressa's group was the last of the Silent Shadow or if other groups survived remains unknown. The next section is a very large interview with John Jackson Miller, author of Undefeated, John Goff, again author of Hunting Party, David Crossland, artist for Night Takes Bishop, and Tyler Jeffers, author of Night Takes Bishop. The interview is very long and gets into the creative process behind these works, the respective author's favorite aspects of Halo, etc, etc. The usual stuff for these sort of interviews. It's definitely worth the read, so check it out on Halo Waypoint, link in the description as always. After that, we get a look at a recently released Halo print, which is also featured in the back-end gallery of Tales from Slipspace, a piece called Mon Izar, named for the Sunghili warrior seen here. Created by Josh Koa, the piece has a truly brilliant description. Monizar knew the stories of the demon were all lies. Metal men who could cut through entire battalions of the Covenant's finest? Nonsense. However, face to face with that creature of legend, in that final moment, Mon was a believer. Short and sweet. And I honestly love the armor design. Very similar to the Hestero Zealot design, but with a unique helmet. Hopefully we'll get the story on that sometime in the future. The background is interesting too. If we presume this is pre-Halo 5, we could see this as the Master Chief engaging a Sunghili on some Sunghili colony. If post-Halo 5, we could see it as the remnant of Jules' Covenant still active on Sunghelios, or perhaps Mon serves with the Servants of the Abiding Truth. Again, I hope we get more details in the future. For now, this is an awesome work of art worthy of any Halo fan's collection. Now that would have been it for Cannon Fodder, but not long after it was posted, it was updated with the description from the upcoming Halo Envoy by Tobias Buckle. It has been six years since the end of the Covenant War, and yet on the planet Cairo, a world on the edge of the Joint Occupation Zone, a decisive new battle suddenly erupts. Human colonists and the alien Sangheili have already been living a tension-filled coexistence in this place, with unified Earth Government Envoy Melody Azikiwe attempting to broker a lasting peace between their two species. But, as a civil war now engulfs the Songhili settlers, Melody must act on an additional covert assignment, courtesy of the Office of Naval Intelligence. Find a way to free the Spartan twos known as Grey Team, held in stasis since the end of the war by a cunning elite fleetmaster consumed with vengeance. And none can anticipate the ongoing violence leading to the discovery of an even greater, unstoppable threat hidden for eons below the surface of the planet. God damn, that is fucking amazing. Grey Team will finally be returning after almost nine years. First mentioned in Halo The Fall of Reach, Grey Team was a Spartan team that was sent deep behind enemy lines to run operations with minimal supervision and support. In 2551, they were deployed on a mission in former human space against the Covenant and never heard from again. In 2008's Halo Cold Protocol, also by Tobias Buckle, we got our first look at Grey Team, their history and how they operate. The response was generally good, I personally loved it and many fans have been waiting years to hear about more. 
Halo Envoy will also serve as a follow-up to Oasis from Halo Fractures, which introduced us to Karo and the human Sunghili conflict there. It also introduced us to a Sunghili leader named Fars, who I would not be surprised to learn is the fleet master holding Grey Team in stasis. Finally, the description mentions a unstoppable threat hidden for eons below the surface. Given that the book is set in 2558, this is very likely a reference to a Guardian. It could always be something else, but I think a Guardian is the most likely candidate. Hopefully, Mr. Buckle can give us a new take on Guardians, perhaps having the thing discovered before the created uprising or something. Whatever the case, I'm excited for the book. And that wraps up this issue. Did you like the trailers or Tales from Slipspace? Are you excited for Halo Envoy? Let me know in the comments below. Also look forward next week to my review of Halo Smoke and Shadow, a digital first novella by Kelly Gay that came out this past Monday. I can tell you now that the book was an absolute fantastic read and I can't wait to share the details and deeper canonical connections with you all. Thanks for watching as always and until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.